それでは皆さん第二部をそろそろ開始したいと思いますので、so like、お席の方にお出かけでしょうか。So、seat, 第二部開始いたします。よろしくお願いいたします。はい、それでは第二部を開始させていただきます。So we like、to to so go back to your seat. Thank you. はい、それでは第二部を開始させていただきます。So, session two is、uh, countermeasures against online piracy. First, we'll be hearing from、uh, Associate Professor Eriko Watanabe of the University of Electrocommunications on the report of quantification analysis of、uh, online piracy in Japan 2022. Over to you, Professor Watanabe. Thank you very much. The benchmarking and tracking online film and TV piracy in Japan 2022. I am、uh, Eriko Watanabe from the University of Electrocommunications. Now, we were、uh, consigned by NPA, conducted by PSS, accredited by、uh, Watanabe at the、uh, University of Electrocommunications. So this is overview of my presentation. First, I'd like to talk about the、uh, survey, the overview of the survey for the online piracy for 2022. And then I'd like to、uh, share with you the characteristics of the Uh, sites that、uh, we surveyed. And then I'd like to share with you the results of the survey in terms of the number of visits and make a comparison in terms of the number of visits with the legal sites. And then I'd like to、uh, share with you the five year track record of the number of visits to the、uh, piracy sites. And then conclusion. This is the overview of the survey for the online piracy for fiscal 2022. First of all, in terms of the period for the survey, covering from、uh, July 1st, 2022 to September 30th of 2022. So that's when we conducted the survey, targeting three years, going back to July 2019 to July 2022. So we covered those three periods in the survey. In terms of the contents, films, TVs, animations, manga, music is outside of the scope for the survey. Now, in terms of the types of the sites, five types for the survey storage sites, or I would refer to them as host and P2P lead site, streaming site, online reading site. Five different types. That we looked into. This is the、uh, method for the survey. First of all,、uh, we made a list of the piracy sites、uh, with the visual check and the flex list, and、uh, others like so seven the methods that will be shown on the slide site. And then we narrowed down the online piracy sites、uh, to decide on which is to be、uh, surveyed. And as、uh, a data collection for the basic data, the name of the site, URL. L site type, the major contents type, the status of the site were checked, and information around servers, net block owner, where it's linked with the domain, and the company operating the IP address. So we obtained that information through Netcraft, and then we collect data in terms of the number of visits to that online piracy using a similar web. 
and the total number of uh, monthly visits over three years and the number of monthly visits by device over three years is what we looked into. Based on this uh, information, uh, we made a quantitative analysis of the trends. So in terms of the online accuracy sites that we looked into in this survey, first of all, the online sites that can be accessed from Japan, we used these seven ways and identified 3,695 sites. And these are seven ways, PSP database, and the past survey data, Lumen database, and transparency report, and the list by the Matome site and similar web and Google search, and through those uh, means, uh, we identified this number of sites. And uh, 3,695 out of them as a first step, uh, pornographic and uh, music and games or uh, non-infringing sites, and where URL is not clear, or where we could not uh, survey, were excluded. And then as a second step, during the survey, the monthly number of visit uh, exceeding 100,000 uh, was identified, and uh, by excluding the uh, sites that are no longer uh, online piracy, uh, it was 867 sites in 2021, but 223 sites were added, and as a result this year, uh, 1,090 sites were identified as a target for the survey. Now, 1,090 piracy sites that we surveyed, uh, let me share with you the characteristics. On the left-hand side, please take a look at the left-hand side. Uh, this is the uh, different types, uh, breakdown by type. Out of 1,090, a majority is uh, streaming sites, followed by host P2P online reading. On the right-hand side, out of 1,090, 46% were active, and uh, those that were closed or that could not be accessed through ERA, 48% of them, and in relate, non-related or uh, sites that were redirected to other sites, 6%. Compared to last fiscal year, there's a 5 percentage increase for the non-accessible. That means that the online piracy has been uh, going through one domain to another, that could be a possibility. So uh, one characteristic of the online piracy is that a breakdown of the site type, content type, P2P, streaming, film, TV, anime are the majority at the top paragraph. Online reading are all manga. For each site, they include uh, films, TV, animation, manga, all of them. Now, another characteristic of the online piracy is that the ratio of the top sites in terms of the number of access on the left-hand side is 2021. Last year, June, on the right-hand side is this year, June 2022. Now, comparing it with the 2021 on the very left-hand side, if you can take a look at the bar on the left-hand side, for 2021, top 10 sites accounted for 63% in terms of the number of visits, whereas 2022, it went down to 42%. Now, top 100 on the very right-hand side, in 21, they accounted for 93 percent, exceeded 90 percent, whereas in 2022, uh, it has come down to 87 percent. What does that mean? A specific infringing site the concentration has gone down and it's been sort of uh, distributed to the online sites that may be created anew and then uh, disappear. And the red part is the online reading site. Last fiscal year, compared to last year, uh, it is coming down clearly still accounting for the higher part, whereas the leech is on the increasing trend a little bit. 
Now, this is the piracy site, top 100 network owners used for the top 100 uh, pirate site. Netcraft, through Netcraft, we can get some information, but this is network owner linked with the domain uh, address. Uh, IP operators who control that. Uh, so June 2019 from the top, followed by June 21, July, June 22. As you can see here, from 2019 to 2022, more than 50% of the piracy use uh, Cloudflare. From here on, the number of visits, the monthly visits, uh, is shared. Now, with the COVID-19, this is after April 2020 when uh, a lockdown started, uh, and ever since then it has a significant uh, increase and peaked at 510 million here and then started to decline and between that period the biggest access uh, top three online uh, leading sites were closed and that should be the factor now this is the number of the monthly visit by site type online reading site is uh, fluctuating, whereas others, lead and streaming and P2P and host, throughout the entire period of the survey, they remained pretty much unchanged. Now, this is the number of monthly visits by device. The red is desktop and the blue is mobile device. Access from the mobile after June 2020 to March 2021, it has gone up, and in March 2021, it exceeded the uh, desktop. The majority is uh, online reading site that uh, is accessed through mobile. This trend continued until October 2021, and then with the closure of the uh, sites, it had come down significantly. The piracy sites number of visits uh, where they had more than 10 million visits. Online reading site, if you can look at the graph for the online reading, for the online reading number of access in 2020, June, from there, there has been a significant increase. And from October 21 to February 22, a significant decline because top three piracy sites were closed down. However, towards the end, even after the closure, various sites were newly created and they disappeared, so that is repeated. And the lead site, uh, the light blue, is uh, you see the number of access uh, increased sharply after the online reading sites were closed. Next is the number of uh, visits to the legitimate sites. As for the number of visits to the legitimate sites, in terms of the observation about that, vis-à-vis -vis the number of visits to the piracy sites, well, we made a comparison between the legitimate site uh, visit and the piracy visit. We looked into the number of visits for the top 20 legitimate sites. But 80% of uh, 71 the sites that we could make into a list uh, are counted by this. Manga and video, animation, uh, films, TV, 10 of each were picked up. Here's a trend in the number of visits to the legitimate site and the piracy sites. 
From November 2019, the number of visits to the legitimate sites has started to increase. And in May 2020, the number of visits to the Paris sites started to gradually increase. 1,090 uh, legitimate sites and 20 legitimate sites were compared. But uh, you can see that the number of uh, visits to the legitimate site is comparable to the number of visits to the legitimate sites between the manga and video. This is how it will look like. The legal manga site and illegal manga site. You see the number of visits, respectively. For the piracy, it's shown in orange. It's continuing to increase uh, from November 2021, it started to decline. For the legal site access, May 2020, up until August 2020, it, the steadily uh, increased, but afterwards, after August 2020, the number of visits to the legal manga site uh, remained flat. Now, this is the trend in terms of the number of visits to the legal video site and the illegal video site. Uh, you see increasing trend for the number of visits to the legal site, whereas uh, for the illegal site, uh, it's on a declining trend. I think uh, there is a correlation on the positive side. Last but not least, uh, in terms of the number of total visits uh, for the online piracy sites for the past five years, this is uh, for 2020 survey, 21 survey, and 22 survey were all put together to make uh, the trend visible. The survey back in 2020, Mangamura, Anichu, Mio Mio, with those, uh, there is a significant uh, sharp increase and peaked in uh, 360 uh, million uh, in March 2018. And after that, the major sites were closed down. And because of uh, the uh, regulation by the government, I uh, showed some decline. And after that, uh, after April 2020, up until October 21, the number of access to the uh, piracy sites uh, increased sharply. And in January 2022, it peaked at 510 million. And in April 2022, uh, there were about 400 million access to the piracy sites. So if I may summarize those results, the characteristics of the uh, online piracy sites uh, that we surveyed in 2022, uh, there were uh, 1,090 sites uh, where there was uh, more than 100,000 access increase by 223 sites on year and year. And looking at the top 100, there was a less con concentration to specific sites, so the access has been distributed across the different sites that were newly created and were disappeared. And top 100 uh, site IP address uh, network owners were looked into, and more than 50% uh, used the Cloudflare. In terms of the trend of the number of monthly visits to the piracy sites, online reading uh, was a trend, and in January 2022, it peaked at 510 million uh, compared to March 2018, where Mangamura was a peak at 360 million, uh, it was 1.4 times, and in July 2022, there was about 400 million uh, access to the piracy sites. Now, in terms of the uh, trend of the number of uh, monthly uh, visits to the piracy sites for the past five years, you see all the detail, but as a result, and the access to the piracy sites uh, has continued to increase. Uh, in terms of the number of visits to the video site, is on a declining trend. Uh, the site access to the manga-related site uh, is going up and down, but it's still on the increasing trend as a whole. So it's getting even more complicated, and the total access is on an increasing trend. That's what we found out this year. That concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Watanabe.
Next, keynote speaker is Ms. Izumi Hayashi, attorney at Sakurazuka Law Firm. She is going to speak about the measures to prevent internet infringement by foreign road operations operators. I hand over to you, Ms. Hayashi. Please give her a applause. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I think there are fewer people in the venue, but uh, I will be uh, talking about the options available for preventing internet infringement by foreign rogue operators. In terms of the topic that I'd like to cover is uh, shown on the screen. I want to first of all talk about essential or fundamental limitations of the current measures. And then, based on that, uh, other countries are implementing what kind of anti-piracy measures and uh, how much progress has been made. And after that, I would like to talk about the anti-piracy measures, whether or not Japan can introduce anti-piracy measures introduced by other countries under the current law. And that is not the case. Uh, so I would like to discuss about that. And uh, sec lastly, in order to respond to the needs of the digital age, maybe we should start discussing the options available for us. Those are the to four topics I want to cover. As you know, in Japan, site blocking, whether to introduce site blocking. Regarding this debate, the secrecy of communication could be violated, according to some scholars. As a result, we have come to a halt for the effort of introducing the uh, site blocking. And earlier, Mr. Tanaka, Secretary General of Cabinet Office Inter Intellectual uh, Property uh, Strategic uh, Headquarters, uh, and I was a member of the uh, committee. And uh, I was participating in that discussion. That was in 2018, so it's been four years. And so in the meantime, as uh, you have seen this uh, uh, screen many, many times. The roadmap has been presented like this, stage one, stage two. So we have to implement everything we can do in the stage one and two. As you can see on the screen, in the second stage, leech site and illegal downloading, uh, we have revised laws and also access warning uh, method was discussed. If all these uh, options were exhausted, we will discuss the blocking. So stage three was actually uh, shelved and roadmap has been updated, but even so, site blocking uh, discussion has been shelved. So that is the current situation. As Ms. Watanabe explained, based on facts, once again, this year, we received a fact-based presentation by her. We are very grateful in stage one and stage two. Everything we can do has to be exhausted by right holders, spending a lot of energy, time, and labor. Even after exhaustion of all these measures, still the uh, piracy is still rampant. Of course, for some times, uh, these measures are effective. However, uh, this is uh, uh, still iteration of uh, infringement, registrar and CDN and the uh, operators located uh, abroad, there is no effective deterrent to these operators. That is the current situation. Against this backdrop, the uh, revised law has been put into effect. So not only efforts by the public sector, but uh, voluntarily, Yahoo, for instance, has taken measure to remove infringing domain from search uh, result. By domain unit, even if uh, such a measure is taken, uh, effectiveness is limited. However, in September 2021, top three sites has been designated, and uh, by domain unit, uh, removal 
uh, has been introduced. Such a voluntary effort is uh, being made by uh, companies. Maybe this is a very big progress on par with the uh, revision of uh, uh, relevant laws in Japan. Having said that, now digital internet world, the uh, judicial power or administrative power uh, cannot reach uh, rogue operators overseas. So to such rogue operators abroad, efficient measures are non-existent. So I think this is, is an issue in any country. Those rightful uh, countries are facing such a war. And in this situation, like Japan, uh, until everybody is convinced, we are not able to uh, change the system. And that is a very moderate or mild uh, approach. However, in other countries, uh, gradually, injunction order against infringing intermediaries is being introduced. There is a theoretical base for such injunction. As you can see, in 2001, EU Directive on Information Society. Uh, in other words, uh, in digital environment, in many cases, intermediaries are best placed to bring such infringing activities to an end. So intermediaries themselves are not uh, infringing. Even in that case, uh, they are not uh, aiding infringement. However, uh, intermediaries are best placed to bring such infringing activities to an end. That is a starting point of uh, thinking about appropriate measures. So that is uh, Article 8 uh, slash 3. Uh, that is the basis, uh, injunction against intermediaries whose services are used by a third party to infringe a copy uh, right or related right. That is the basis that was introduced in 2001 as a directive. And also in Europe, we have seen uh, various precedents, case law. For example, in 2014, EU Court of Justice rendered a, a judgment. Uh, the internet access providers like UPC, Telecabo, uh, regarded as an intermediary within the meaning of Article 8.3 of that directive. And based on that, injunction order uh, can be implemented. Now, at the national level, country level, removal or demotion of infringing domains on the search listing uh, is uh, introduced. So the uh, result ranking uh, demotion is introduced. In the case of the UK, in February 2017, by the good offices of Intellectual Property Ministry, right holders and uh, search engines like Google and Bing uh, came to agreement on the code of practice and the removal uh, of the search result uh, was introduced. Further, in Germany, they have taken a step further DNS blocking introduction. In order to introduce the system, the right holder and the internet service provider have agreed to establish, uh, I don't know how you pronounce it, QE, or clearing house for copyright on the internet. It was established last year. So the website, uh, if we see the translation from Germany into English of the website. In order to block, uh, very specific procedures are uh, stipulated, and uh, we can learn from that. So let me uh, introduce that. Uh, this is a code of conduct, code of practice, and right holders and the telecom uh, operators agreed on that. And uh, within the QE, there is a committee. And this committee uh, consists of former judges of federal courts of Germany. And uh, they uh, can uh, render uh, adjudication or arbitral uh, uh, decision. 
as an arbitrator. And then such a recommendation is made that is uh, referred to the federal network agency. And this agency, uh, there will be a confirmation that the blockade will not violate net neutrality. So when net neutrality uh, is ensured, then uh, that information is uh, handed over to QE, and QE will send this recommendation to German ISP so that the ISP can limit the access. So regarding this issue to the federal government, opponents uh, can send a inquiry for information and the parliament can indicate the effectiveness of DNS and uh, there is no unconstitutionality uh, problem. Therefore, white paper by the parliament has been already published. So we see such move overseas, but how about in Japan? Uh, can we not acknowledge such responsibilities of the intermediaries? Is that something that I'd like to discuss next? So here, also in Japan, to the intermediaries, to hold them responsible, there have been some precedent rulings uh, that held them accountable. Uh, the railway train, or well, if you place an order, uh, if you place a, a rock or the stone on the tracks, and the friend who was uh, next to the person was uh, just looking but then the ruling is that this friend was also held responsible, also from the civil perspective. Uh, earlier I talked about Europe. So helping the infringement for uh, someone who is at the optimum position to avoid the infringement, uh, this person is held accountable. And video made uh, a case uh, is uh, one president. For instance, you can be held accountable as a core uh, person providing support to the infringement for that possibility so far. Uh, what you see in the middle, for instance, uh, if you leave it unattended uh, after knowing that it's an infringement act, then you will be held responsible as the main person of the infringement action per se. So Chupa Chap's uh, case, and the two people are held uh, guilty, uh, those for the presidents. And once it's deemed that it's a infringement, then in the copyright law, Article 112, uh, you can actually place an order for uh, the necessary actions to prevent the infringement. As for the specific application in the past, and there is a Supreme Court on the patent case. Uh, for identifying uh, the uh, physioactive uh, substance uh, measurement. And that is also referred to uh, to draw rulings on the copyright related laws. And the Safinad appeal case based on the copyright law uh, Article 112, one injunction on the performance and based on Article 112.2, the removal or the prohibition of uh, carrying uh, the instrument such as piano that is used to perform, uh, such order can be given. And civil court wise and copyright uh, law wise, uh, to pursue the responsibilities uh, to the intermediaries are stipulated. Therefore, various uh, Operators uh, struggled to pursue those held responsible and repeated uh, requesting the information to be disclosed for who was the center of the information and making these litigations. But uh, based on the rulings, even if you take the ruling, if uh, the other counterparty escapes, you may not get anything back. And uh, ever until uh, there is a revision of the law as of October 1st uh, for uh, the different steps of uh, the disclosure request. Uh, if you're in the second case, then the data may be deleted by then. So based on this law, uh, to what extent this uh, information disclosure for the sender uh, can be simplified and be made swiftly is something that we need to keep an eye on. Now my last 
In conclusion, taking this uh, into consideration, not analog, but we're in a digital era. We're already living in the internet world. So cyber physical is now intertwined with each other. Therefore, the measures to prevent the infringement uh, through intertwining of the cyber physical, we need to make that into effective one. For that purpose, under the current copyright law, the interpretation and uh, the requirements may not be necessarily clear, so that could uh, induce uh, some uh, various opposing ideas. Uh, therefore, option one here, the amendment of the copyright law as part of the amendment, uh, we should set up uh, uh, requirements to clarify the requirements uh, to order the infringement prevention measures to the intermediaries. And in parallel to that, as a second uh, option, at least in Japan, uh, we should promote uh, the consensus building uh, between uh, the copy holder, uh, the, the right holders and the intermediaries, uh, just like the case in UK and German, uh, QE or CUII to prevent the infringement. For either way, we need to start the specific discussion for the system design. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Hayashi. It was very insightful presentation. Thank you. Now we would like to move on to the uh, second panel discussion. We are going to change the stage layout, so please wait for a while. Thank you for waiting. This is going to be the last leg of our program, the panel discussion. Let me introduce the speakers one by one. Uh, Mr. Toyama Tomihiro. And also, uh, Ms. Hayashi Izumi, who has just spoken. 
and uh, Professor Obinata, uh, Dean and Professor of uh, Kumamoto University Faculty of Law, and uh, Mr. Iku Takahashi, Attorney at Law. A moderator is a uh, Mr. Tomohiro Toyama, who is the partner at TMI uh, Associates. He is engaged in the protection of copyright as a lawyer of the major uh, film companies, and also he is engaged in many entertainment businesses, including film production, sports, and music. And he served as the inaugural uh, head of the Japan chapter of Motion Picture Association of America. Now. Uh, Mr. Obinata and Mr. Takahashi, for five minutes each, could you give us a presentation? Now, Toyama-san, uh, please, first of all. So, Professor Obinata, first of all, could you give us a presentation? So, please be remain seated while you make a presentation. I am Obinata. I am with Kumamoto University. And uh, regarding the piracy blo site blocking, uh, there is a uh, negative view presented by uh, influential constitutional scholars. However, if you think about this, there are ways to block sites in line with the uh, laws. It don't, it doesn't have to be uh, unconstitutional in my view. First of all, as you know, in 2018, in April, the government has introduced so-called emergency uh, measures. And the, until that law is introduced, this is an emergency and uh, uh, provisional uh, measures. Therefore, uh, ISP, a voluntary effort to block is requested uh, to infringing uh, sites. However, some people say that this is tantamount to censorship and violation of the secrecy of communication and so forth, and violation of privacy. So on these three points, I would like to explain my view briefly. First of all, the is piracy blocking censorship on this question, it is true that uh, government uh, emergency measures of April 2018, such a form of blocking, uh, is not necessarily aligned with the blocking definition of case laws. However, uh, to some extent, some people can say that this is a censorship. However, uh, the government is taking the lead, and also the government uh, judge whether the uh, the content is uh, good or bad, and it has the effect of prohibiting expression. That is the ground for this argument. However, I forgot to mention this on the screen, but uh, four years ago, Tokyo High Court rendered a judgment, and this may be unconstitutional that Tokyo High Court said. However, uh, in, uh, there is a uh, Supreme Court uh, ruling of 1983, which is famous uh, uh, decision. According to this, the if aggrieved uh, party make an application and if uh, the uh, judicial court make a judgment, and issue order to block. That would not be the unconstitutional, or that would not be a censorship. Therefore, uh, as long as the uh, judicial court uh, renders a judgment and order uh, ISP to block site, this is a judicial uh, site blocking, and this is not uh, unconstitutional. Now, next, now, blocking may infringe on the secrecy of communication. This is another uh, criticism. Then why secrecy of communication is protected? Uh, if we think about the legal interest protected by the secrecy, simply put, this is the protection of privacy rights. However, when it comes to privacy, uh, it is not uh, clearly defined, legally clearly defined uh, legal uh, interest. Uh, it could be a moral right. And in this case, uh, private matters 
shall not be divulged. And secondly, if uh, the privacy can be understood as a means to control personal information. And thirdly, uh, in order to receive certain service, service provider has received the personal information. In this case, uh, appropriate management of personal information uh, is sought after. So this can be considered as a privacy right as well. Uh, therefore, uh, I think privacy protected by the secrets of communication that is said to be violated by blocking uh, is probably the type three privacy. So the appropriate management of information, as long as appropriate management is ensured, privacy is not uh, violated. That means that uh, secrecy of communication is still ensured. Last point, does blocking violate freedom of expression? That is another argument put forward. My view is as follows on this point. When you talk about the freedom of expression, expresses right, and also those who are receiving expression, namely the right to know, is involved. In the case of expresses right, there is no right to express uh, pirated information, so this is not to be allowed. On the other hand, uh, even if information is illegal or harmful, if it is uh, for some use, the illegality of such information can be barred or dropped. In the case of piracy blocking, the users of pirated sites, their rights are in question here. However, such a right cannot be accorded because what we can uh, know on the internet is because information is uploaded on the internet. Uploading such information is illegal. Therefore, uh, there is no freedom to see such information illegally uploaded. So uh, just browsing without downloading uh, also constitute uh, uh, the violation of the law. It is not to be protected by the law because it only constitutes reflective benefit from illegally uploaded uh, content. And then the next step is to expand the scope of blocking according to some people. That is a slippery slope theory. However, in my view, this is groundless because the uh, defamation or privacy infringing expression, uh, illegality of such information can be barred uh, because there is a uh, oppositional value of interest such as criticism of public figures. And the, uh, we don't see any oppositional value. So uh, freedom to see piracy information has been already denied by me. So in this way, within the constitutional studies, uh, site blocking is quite notorious. However, if you think about it, as long as we have the law that stipulates requirements and uh, uh, procedures, and if the judicial court is to be involved, that is a judicial uh, blocking, in that case, there there is no uh, way to say that is uh, uh, unconstitutional. Thank you. That's all. So, Hayashi-san made a presentation earlier, so next I'd like to invite that Mr. Takahashi. So, Ms. Hayashi talked about uh, the responsibility for uh, intermediary. So, Takahashi-san, vis-a-vis the intermediary, the responsibility and liability, these two terms uh, which are different with each other, as I understand. If you can talk about that. Thank you for the introduction. I am Takahashi. Yes, indeed. As you can see on the screen, oh, this is a session as part of the Tokyo International Film Festival. So Sofia Coppola's uh, Lost in Translation is uh, well known, but Lost in Translation means uh, something that is lost in the translation, uh, the meaning that is lost in the translation. And the legal uh, professionals uh, often talk about the responsibility. But there should be two factors when we say responsibility. One is what is often used by the uh, legal professionals, the liability. When the result happens, then uh, that uh, there is uh, the damage that should be claimed. And as a result of uh, the legal enforcement, 
you'll be charged uh, criminally. So that's what uh, we mean by liability. Whereas the uh, responsibility is that even when some issue happens, then well, this is how you should respond. We recommend you to take this action and uh, if necessary, by some administrative uh, force or uh, the, by the ruling of the court, uh, you're asked to, you're obliged to respond to a certain way. That's a responsibility. In many cases, in basically, they match with each other, but in some cases, liability is not necessarily equal to responsibility. Uh, the legal procedure uh, to make someone liable uh, is quite uh, cumbersome, so we don't necessarily pursue that path. Now, in this case, uh, how do we interpret that? The first point is, basically, uh, I'd like to first talk about the liability, the intermediary. What do we mean by intermediary? Uh, for uh, information, there is a sender, there is a receiver, there is someone who uh, transport, and it's uh, supported by the intermediary. Now, intermediary, uh, as a good citizen, he likes to say, uh, in your own territory, so to speak, uh, if the illegal information is communicated, of course, the good citizen is not willing to support such illegal information to be communicated, so you might uh, want to think about how to stop it. If you uh, are not doing that, then you may be held uh, liable. So that's about uh, liability. But then uh, this is uh, how we define liability in the form of the drawing, basically. So illegal information can be communicated. Uh, what's the possibility of that? And how much are you supporting that? Conversely, how easy can that be stopped? Now, intermediary is a very broad concept. And there is a terminology in Europe. Provider can be divided into three. So called the conduit. Conduit provider and cash provider and hosting provider three types of providers. In the modern world, uh, there will be variations from these in different ways. Uh, conduit provider uh, is uh, access provider, to be more strict. But then uh, there is another form of cash provider, like CDN. And for the hosting, something close to hosting, search engine or searching uh, provider uh, could be something very close to hosting. So they are defined as uh, intermediary in a very broad concept involved in this uh, internet communication. So just because you're intermediary, it doesn't mean that you have to stop everything and anything. There are different stances and positions. So on the very left-hand side, uh, conduit provider, the vertical, well, it says X axis, so it's a possibility of liability which is coming left compared to zero. So to this conduit provider, to hold them liable, if that's the case, then that's too much of a heavy burden for them. Back in 1990s, internet service started to be launched and to hold the access providers or conduit providers are held responsible. Uh, they would say, well, we can't be involved in this business if it's such high risk, so safe harbor should be established. That's how uh, the safe harbor regulations were put in place. As it was the case in EU, and same for the United States. Now, is it safe harbor for any time? Probably not, because when you know realistically, that should be different. Uh, that's the legal framework in uh, any markets, and also in Japan, the provider uh, liability uh, law stipulates that in uh, Article 31 for an uh, unspecific target, if it's uh, technically, technically possible to make a preventive action and knowing that uh, some other uh, right holders uh, right is infringed and that you may be held responsible. So that is stipulated in the Japanese law and I think it's also the case in other countries as well. 
Now, in X axis, it was in a negative uh, area, but in some cases, you may be held liable, liable with all these different uh, types of providers. Realistically, well, if uh, we find something illegal, uh, we need to stop. Otherwise, we may be held liable. That could be a case. Furthermore, now I'm talking about responsibility, you have to respond. Let's think about that. But sorry for inconsistency here, but how about thinking from a cost perspective? Access providers, uh, if they're told that they have to stop, which site do they have to stop and how? Are you going to ask me to think about how and which site to stop? So the cost would be quite high. To ask the providers to bear this cost, that doesn't really make sense. Then from the level where I can be suspended, it's too costly. But uh, there's this expression, least cost avoider. If there's a pollution issue, well, this is also the same as the pollution issue. Uh, there is uh, organized uh, criminal group uh, stealing uh, some other one's IP, like a rogue, and utilizing that, and the international law enforcement office, would they take good care of that? Well, it's difficult. Uh, it's not uh, meaningful to use our own resources for other countries to make a profit. So from Japan perspective, well, you can't do anything about it yourself. So it's just like pollution. So to remove the damage of the pollution, if you place a device here, they will stop. Then those damaged uh, will be willing to pay and bear a cost to try to stop that in between. So with the same uh, way of thinking, with the beneficiary and uh, the person in the middle who will stop the damage can make an agreement. Or uh, the society may say, well, if it's too costly, we can do some help. So uh, please do something for the entire society. That could happen. And if you use that in a very difficult of, uh, equation or formula, I could receive a Nobel Prize. So that's how the least cost avoider uh, definition comes from. With the least cost to stop the damage, then they'll be held responsible to design the legal framework. Then automatically, uh, there's a discussion between the least cost advisor and those damaged uh, and make the efficient society. Uh, that's a very hot theoretical discussion. So the providers being all these cost advisors, uh, the supports and the framework should be provided to reduce the cost if that's the case. If that happens, then you see a line going up. So for those providers, the sense of burden can be limited, reduced. Then uh, for the entire society, for the entire country, the perspective of welfare can be improved. And you'll bring about more benefit to, the, to Japan as a whole. But then wait a minute, if a provider is asked to do something, but then when it comes to telecom, uh, telecom needs to be served all over throughout in a fair way that's in law. So how about the relationship with that? So in 2018, there was much discussion on uh, entity intimidation telegram a case. A telecom, even if it's a telegram intimidating someone, even if it's illegal, that telegram needs to be delivered. Uh, that was a ruling made. Uh, as an uh, interpretation, uh, it was back in Article 34, then now Article 25 of Telecom Business Act. Without uh, due cause, it cannot be stopped. So it was a very narrow interpretation. Now, site blocking or a copyright infringement, the illegal act, to stop that with this uh, due cause cannot be justified. That's an open question. The Telecom Business Act, for only for the basic uh, telecom service, uh, there is this provision, but with the amendment, internet uh, is now included in the basic uh, telecom, so we need to uh, put together and organize the relationship here. So for the secrecy of uh, telecom in the Telecom Business Act uh, uh, in 2018, there was a ruling that it would uh, infringe 
the secrecy. Internet service providers are looking at where all the communications go to as a destination. And then with that, if they are asked to through the order to stop, then they will only naturally follow that. So if there's any legal due cause, uh, some uh, framework to set that forth uh, and saying that it's illegal, uh, I don't understand it myself uh, from my stance, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, during the TIF, I think this is a very important part of the TIF, creation, protection, and utilization of contents. Unless you protect, you can't use it. If you cannot utilize, you can't uh, produce uh, resources for making further. And such a site blocking has been discussed since 2015, but uh, it has not been uh, making a progress. It's completely stalled. 36 years ago, Fukuoka incident, Fukuoka case is something I want to talk about. This is physically possible to block sites. In 1986, November uh, 25th in Fukuoka uh, at uh, 12 uh, video shops and two factories. It's not uh, big factories, it's only backyard of the cleaning shop. And ha there have been uh, 120 uh, videos, uh, 510 videos, and the uh, 9,000 videos have been confiscated. Uh, the arrest uh, apprehended, and this is a uh, uh, crackdown on the 25th of November, and for 15 hours until 4 o'clock p.m. on the next day, uh, uh, they, uh, all these products have been seized. Uh, at that time, we don't know if this is a legitimate or illegitimate, therefore everything had to be seized. A rental shop as a site uh, was the venue for the seizure and they have been blocked from operation. Therefore, from that day, they will not be able to operate the business. That was possible. This was a major uh, incident. And uh, right-related uh, people, about 999 people, uh, sent about 35,000 letters uh, to uh, appraise, to say uh, they are uh, illegitimate uh, items. And there are many personnel uh, mobilized, and next year the jail term was uh, issued, it was uh, guilty. So 36 years ago, this was possible because uh, the sites were there physically. However, we can't do that. Uh, just because illegal sites, uh, we can't do that because we don't know where servers are located, we don't know where the perpetrators are, we cannot uh, uh, make an on-site inspection, although this is a criminal act, but we can't uh, uh, raid the site. That is why it is uh, uh, left unattended. The biggest problem with this is, what do you think? Watanabe-sensei talked about the, the damage uh, suffered uh, 40, 450, uh, 410 million uh, accesses per month, visits per month. So to the extent people are accessing such illegal sites and uh, uh, looking the uh, content, but on the other hand, only 50,000 videos, uh, uh, 40,000 uh, videos have been uh, uh, seized. So it is huge difference uh, by the order of 10,000 or not. So to this extent, the harm is done. But the secrecy of communication, censorship, these are talked about to prevent site, uh, site blocking, that maybe children are accessing such infringing sites. Just because uh, there is a problem with the Constitution, we cannot implement site blocking. I think we can't tolerate such a situation. Intermediaries and aiders, they should be criminally liable, in my view, because they know what they are doing, uh, and they leave infringing sites unattended. They know this is a pirated site, but they don't do anything. That means that uh, they are uh, assisting such a practice. Then criminal offense has to be declared for such a intermediaries, then they can make a, a change a difference.
Thank you. The intermediaries themselves, whether there is any uh, degree of a criminal act as a negligence, then of course, uh, from the criminal perspective, uh, it can be sued as someone who helped the criminal act. But in that case, uh, the issue at the bottom is the anonymous uh, feature of the internet. So we can't identify who is supporting, uh, who is helping that. I think ISP can be defined as uh, supporters. In the case of uh, ISP, as uh, Takashi Sensei mentioned, the period of uh, the issue unattended, uh, we need to put some conditions. Uh, I'm saying this for the first time. Uh, there should be uh, the uh, crime for leaving issue unattended after you knowing the fact for a month uh, not doing anything, uh, leaving that unattended. That means that the illegal site is repeating the criminal act and uh, you must be supporting that to continue. The reason why I came up with that is that I talked about the Fukuoka incident, 45,000 videos to indict them, to prosecute them. It took a huge amount of work in Higashi Fukuoka's gymnasium. We put them all, and one by one, uh, we had to prove the criminal act. Uh, the criminal act there is uh, the copy or the rental uh, if it's rental, who did this uh, video lease to, rented out to, or this uh, shop uh, rented to Toyama-san when those detailed facts uh, needed to be uh, made concrete so that we could prosecute. So it was a huge amount of work. Two years later, what could we do? There was a legal amendment, and it's a, a, a right to hold the fact. The, the position, so that means that uh, if you go to a shop uh, and there is this uh, product uh, with the illegal intention, and if you're possessing that, uh, then that's uh, a crime. So prosecutors, police, uh, all we had to do is to prove that uh, it's a position, but it took so much time it can be used effectively. November 25th, uh, 1986, and it was only one year after that that we were able to state fight. If it's just a position, then with the raid, then the fact of position uh, could be finalized right there. So it was an uh, innovative amendment for the copyright law. And likewise, uh, this uh, criminal of uh, leaving the issue unattended, if it can be stipulated in Article 143 or wherever, in other words, you don't know where the server is, you don't know who is uh, operating uh, the legal site. Uh, you don't know where he or she is. So it's very difficult to identify. Then we have no other choice but to go to the intermediary. So Takashi Sensei, unless we go that far, uh, we do have lawyers in the constitutional academia. Or if it says uh, secrecy, censorship, we cannot make a progress. Uh, at the Ministry of Education, in the Copyright uh, Bureau, uh, this uh, criminal uh, position being created, that's innovation. What do you think? I myself, for this uh, someone holding, uh, charging for the position, I'm not very positive about that. I think uh, it can be quite... Uh, Controversial. So on the internet, uh, there are some people who make a lie saying, go, oh, I, they are to stop it. So even if it, there is a system in place, the system itself could be abused, so to speak. That could be a potential risk. I think there is a high risk that the system can be abused to a certain extent. That's my perspective. Now, just today, in front of you, my uh, copy has been handed out to you, and what I introduce here is uh, the trusted uh, fragger in Europe, this uh, concept or idea. CYI, uh, there was an introduction there. So with a good set of panel, decision needs to be made. Or CUII. So where I said with the red line, 
the can improve the level, then on the liability side, you can be held liable. I think that kind of direction will be made more clear. I think I would see a balance. And furthermore, for the attorney uh, to send a letter, uh, the attorney, if you're asked by a client, say, I'm uh, suffering a damage, uh, you have no choice but to send out the uh, letter. Uh, so having this uh, neutral uh, panel to make a decision and uh, charging for a libel, otherwise, the system wise, it would be quite difficult. Understood. Thank you. So originally, I think this is a criminal act. That is why we can we could raid the site, and we raided the site and seized the position. And without that, we can uh, indict the criminals as a cri uh, judicial procedure. Of course, there has be there has to be a thorough investigation on the side of prosecutors, and uh, uh, thirty thousand or more. Uh, uh, appraisal uh, documents have been produced, and also the definition of illegal site uh, is another uh, issue. However, uh, more, uh, as long as we can prove these uh, illegal sites, then we can stop, and it could be a criminal offense. As long as we can say that, I think people can stop, more or less. Well, the constitutionalists, uh, I have been reading their uh, views. However, it's very difficult to understand what the constitutional experts are saying. Uh, it could be a censorship, they say, and the censorship, as we know, during the war, we understand that very easily. You, the content has to be reviewed and to decide a publication or not, and uh, we can, they say, we have to change here and there. According to the secrecy of communication, wiretapping is done, and uh, we can uh, understand the intent of uh, perpetrators. So as the specific uh, act, uh, conduct, the opposing constitutional uh, experts. I can't understand which, what kind of acts are actually said to be unconstitutional. Uh, there is a, a secrecy of communication issue, but I want to know specifically what kind of acts constitute the violation of the secrecy of communication. Every day, uh, thousands of thousands of downloadings done, and we leave it unattended. And uh, maybe I don't want to uh, see a liability of leaving the situation unattended from the uh, experts or scholars. However, if in your understanding, what kind of acts constitute censorship or violation of the secrecy of communication according to these scholars? Do you have any idea? Well, I don't understand either. <laughs> So uh, that is why we say that uh, uh, this is constitutional. That is why we have the move in that direction. The government uh, is going to see whether this is a piracy or not. They think the government will do that. Then uh, government is always monitoring that uh, access destinations. So I think that is a basic premise shared by the constitutional scholars opposing and know and obtain information, so acknowledgement and uh, acknowledgement has to be there. So, so Toyama was trying to access such and such destinations. So the act of such acknowledgement doesn't uh, uh, exist because this is a simple blocking and uh, uh, driving consumers to uh, legal sites. So where do you see violation in such a process, if you understand? Or Takahashi Sensei or Hayashi Sensei, if you understand? あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
the problem has to look into that, and that itself uh, is infringing the secrecy of telecommunication. That's how we can interpret uh, in the expression by Professor Sogabe. But that's what the providers normally do. So if it's deemed uh, illegal, then other providers uh, are illegal. So that provider is uh, illegal. But the interpretation is that uh, by the Minister of uh, Internal Affairs is that uh, it can be done legally. So this uh, illegality of violating the telecommunication secrecy, uh, it's not necessarily a well thought. For well, these are specific work comments, requirements fitting uh, such and such, uh, that's not the expression made clearly. That's my understanding. Providers are watching the destinations. The company employee A is not always watching, right? The company employee B is watching all the time. No, that is not the case. Hayashi Sensei? In uh, 2018, uh, there's a task force uh, by the cabinet office, uh, IT headquarters, and there was a huge discussion. And in the interim report, it was just a draft in October 2018. So that it was not uh, necessarily agreed. And page 68 or so of this interim report, uh, infringing the secrecy of telecommunication, the rationale for saying that uh, is written. And that's uh, difficult for me to understand, but the indemnified or in terms of where to access, where I have accessed that information or where I have accessed ISP being able to see that information is because it's based on the assumption that it will be accessed. And based on that, uh, that will be allowed. If that's blocked, then uh, that would be a stealing. I don't know how it can be deemed stolen uh, backward. I don't understand how many times I read it. I sent out a postcard and at the post office. And for instance, I wrote a love letter on the uh, postcard. It's not in envelope, therefore postman can look at it. And postman then is violating the secrecy of communication, then uh, it is violating the secrecy of communication. However, postman is not actually reading the postcard, then why this secrecy of communication applies to him? In any case, uh, 36 years ago, uh, we could have, we, 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 we did this. However, we can't do that now because we are living in digital internet-based world. Then, digital internet world we are living in, the similar kind of criminal act, how are we going to apprehend such an act? From that perspective, we have to consider the measures we can take. Actually, in order to arrest a criminal, it's very difficult. It's almost impossible. Then, if that's the case, then, Intermediary is best positioned. We have to uh, target the intermediaries. Sorry, although we're running out of time, but uh, who should we charge for the liability and responsibility? There are different types. Uh, the co-criminal uh, who is uh, providing support or helping, or someone who is also directly infringing, or uh, even though you're not even helping or supporting, but uh, you're still at the optimal position to stop the infringement uh, who was supposed to make any preventive measures. So these are the four potential categories to set the uh, conditions and requirements and how the cost should be borne. And if there's a complaint from uh, where it was stopped, the ISPs, uh, so that they won't be held responsible, liable, in uh, CUII, uh, there is this uh, a system to receive that. Uh, that kind of discussion should be launched. And that's towards the end of the interim report uh, published in October 2018. Uh, it's mentioned, but uh, no progress for four years. How about uh, Mr. Takahashi, intermediary? So if I may go further, criminal act has to be found, detected, 
Otherwise, in the internet world, we can't live through them. Simply, uh, based on the liability theory, yes, they are, held, are to be held uh, liable. Uh, civil, in the uh, civil side, they are liable. However, we cannot pursue criminal uh, liability. Then that doesn't uh, give uh, any deterrence. Then we can't arrest the uh, criminal offender. Then those who are involved in infringement, we have to target them. Like on the rail track, if you put uh, stones and you uh, can hold such a person as a contributor or assister, assistant. So otherwise, uh, Japanese people are mild-oriented and uh, uh, we will be suffering from many, many billions of uh, dollars of loss. However, they will be suffering from criminal offenses. However, the uh, creation, creative activity will be suffering. Maybe I should be a politician to change the world. However, uh, MIC, uh, Ministry of Internal Affairs, uh, people have to listen, and also those opposing uh, scholars also have to come on board on discussion as well. How about the United States, they would say? How about other countries, what they are doing? We don't have any precedent. Uh, other countries, uh, they have a limitation and uh, a blocking, and in some countries, administrative uh, procedure is uh, guaranteed for the blocking of the sites. So and if we have a good understanding of what other countries are doing, then why in Japan are we bullying, uh, bullying the artists and uh, I feel so happy? That's my impression. I totally agree. So maybe the America is the head office of the MPA, and uh, they want to know what they are doing. How about the United States? Uh, but, but I would say that they are taking uh, sufficient measures. There are many rights entangled, but uh, we can't go uh, on and on in terms of discussion. We have to step out of the current situation. So I. I hope that you will work even harder to send uh, easy to understand messages. So this is being streamed, right? We have a live streaming of this discussion, right? And uh, uh, 410 million uh, criminal acts are being uh, done a month, and this is left unattended. So this is a serious issue. Those who want to become creator, and they produce a creation, and the creation has to be protected, have, we are stifling, and we are inhibiting such a creative uh, work. Maybe some people are complacent because we don't see any blood. However, the charge of position was introduced that made a difference in physical uh, pirated uh, versions uh, have significantly uh, dropped in a short span of time, and it has come down to less than 5%. But even so, uh, vendors, street vendors, are still selling uh, unauthorized versions. So in digital age, how are we going to stop such a crime? What is the best means to do that? So in that sense, as was mentioned earlier, Fukuoka incident, the crackdown, uh, we can seize uh, everything. However, in the internet age, we don't have any physical thing. Uh, therefore, we can't seize any products in question. That's what I wanted to say was that uh, what would be effective for the international rogues on the internet, uh, the most effective one is that DNS blocking should be the most effective means for the international rogues, uh, which is approved in Germany by the parliament, and for the legal amendment for the lead site, Professor Ueno of Waseda University has been discussing for seven years, uh, finally enabling the legal amendment. It's too slow. Japan that cannot change for anything. It almost makes me feel that uh, I really don't care anymore, but uh, once again, I should never give up and continue to work on this.
rogue operators chasing and trying to find rogue operators. It is quite difficult to do that. There are even more serious uh, crimes in, Japan, in the world, in Internet, wants to detect. I don't want to name the countries. However, uh, they would search and uh, try to find uh, criminals. Uh, we can't involve Internet, Interpol, I mean. Maybe Japan. Alone cannot make an effort either. Therefore, we have to find uh, some means to stop such a crime. What is the most efficient, most appropriate means to do that? We had such a discussion last year, too, and uh, those opponent. We have to convince the opposing scholars, and you don't feel any responsibility? for leaving the situation unattended. We have another five, more, five minutes. You can say anything you want. Let's take advantage of this time. 36 years ago, uh, there was a raid, and immediately that, the rental shop sites were blocked. And even in 2020, we can't do anything. Discussion is not making a progress at all. So. Uh, this is a big crime in terms of the copyright protection. So uh, two minutes each, I want to give you. You can express whatever you think. So Takahashi Sensei, please. For the details are written here, but basically, in 2018, the initial Phase, there was, it started with uh, not uh, buttoning up uh, rightly. And with that, if the government thinks of this seriously, then uh, some uh, experts like us and uh, those who suffer damage, if there's a close coordination with each other, so that strategically we can develop a process, and just like a spy, we active silently to achieve the target and goals. Uh, uh, it would have been great if we could have done that far, but actually, because of the legal or compliance, uh, without such legal compliance check, uh, we said that we all did, we, let's all do this and surprise people. And we started with the negative image. That's how I see it. Now four years have passed, so why don't we go back and try to draw a strategy once again? And as us, as a professional here, for the uh, reasonable approach, I'd like to continue my efforts but because of uh, various uh, factors. If we can get as much support as we can, then we can drive the change in society. Of course, the cost is a big factor. But if that uh, uh, is solved, then uh, we should go for a better direction in Japan. Obinata Sensei, please. Yes. Relatively speaking, as far as I'm concerned, I am quite cool headed because I am a, a constitutional scholar. I am not saying for or against the site blocking per se, but I want to look at the issue from the constitutionality. And the, the censorship is often talked about. And the censorship, this is criticized by academic society. However, we have a definition of censorship by the Supreme Court. And also, the whether uh, uh, we can introduce a law that is aligned to uh, public we welfare. Now, what is important here is uh, what is the public welfare? Uh, Mr. Toyama uh, said, what public welfare? I think this is self-evident. Therefore, the public welfare has to be protected. Therefore, required procedure has to be defined. So all these have to be incorporated into the law. And uh, uh, maybe we should establish an uh, independent administrative organ, and uh, that would not uh, violate the Constitution, I don't think. So that's all. Thank you. Yeah, Hayashi Sensei. Uh, so, Hayashi Sensei, thank you. When the site blocking was discussed, and those who opposed them raised various concerns. Consumers Association Group, 
uh, mentioned that it could be deemed as a censorship before the world. Some countries, especially uh, how the governments are in an administrative way, depending on how you handle it, if uh, one letter of uh, your name in the government uh, is out, then that site gets blocked. Uh, YouTube in Japan, for instance, uh, cannot be accessed in some country. So, of course, there is such a risk in terms of how you use it. That's why, from the beginning, uh, we should go with the judicial way. That's why we've been uh, arguing. So we hope that there's going to be a specific discussion and making the progress. Thank you very much. Strategy, legal strategy was talked about, just like election uh, voters, not only voters, but also our children and everybody has to come on board. They have to understand how are we going to convince people? How are we going to get support, public support? We have to make further efforts to gain public support. I was wrong. I We, ha we should have ended five after five, so we went uh, overboard a little bit. But uh, if you have questions, please ask the panelists on an individual basis. Thank you very much. Sorry, I didn't properly inform you the end of time of the panel discussion. Once again, please give a big round of applause to the uh, panel. Toyama Sensei, Obinata Sensei, Takai Sensei, Hayashi Sensei, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please go back to your seat. Now, thank you very much for coming to MPA seminar as a co-hosted uh, event of the 35th TIF. In closing our program, I would like to invite Mr. Ito Shintaro, member of the House of Representatives, acting chairman of the uh, Policy Research Council and uh, LDP Secretary General, and uh, let me read it out. I'd like to send my heart well the congratulations to the hosting of the 12th MPA seminar uh, together with the Tokyo International Film Seminar. The urgent issue of uh, protecting the copyright uh, measures uh, uh, against the online piracy, piracy sites, uh, including site blocking, was taken up and discussed. It's very significant and encouraging. And this year, uh, the new topic was added, uh, the production incentives, uh, which is also another interesting theme. I know that the significant discussion was held on both topics, and the seminar was a fruitful one. And I'd like to pay my respect to uh, those people who made efforts to organize in this event, and I'd like to uh, pray for your health and success. October 26, 2022, Shintaro Ito, thank you. So with this, we would like to conclude the 12th APA seminar in conjunction with the 35th Tokyo International Film Festival. Thank you very much for being with us. And thank you very much to the U.S. Embassy and the FJFI for providing support to us. Thank you once again. どうも皆様ありがとうございました。Please make sure you return the headsets for the simultaneous receiver's uh, interpretation at the exit.